Mental Fox here with another episode of my playthrough of Skyrim. Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm glad you're here. Lydia and I are way up on top of this mountain. I don't know if these mountains have names. If they do, they're not listed here on the game map. But uh, I would have to think that uh, in a world as rich as this one created here for Skyrim, that each of these mountains, mountain peaks, have a name. But uh, we're on near the top of one of them. And uh, we've come up here because we're supposed to destroy this vampire, Vigor. Uh, we um, learned about him from Dengir back in Falkreath over here. Uh, apparently this guy, this Vigor guy, is one of uh, Dengir's ancestors. And uh, somebody dug up his grave and removed the wardstone, and then this dude was, you know, free to leave his grave. And now he is up here in uh, Bloodlet Throne. And Dengir's ask us, asked us to... Uh, destroy him uh, so that his family does not face shame. That is what we're doing. That's why we're up here. Come on, Lydia. Let's go kill a vampire. At least try to, anyway. The entrance is somewhere down here. Interesting. So there's the steps to the place. Huh. Did I miss a path? I'm curious. The path to get there... I guess, um... If you think about, I'm not sure which road I took to get in here, what little path, but maybe I'm supposed to follow this path down around this way. I'm just going to try to get down here without losing Lydia. There's a little snow fox over there, it looks like. Ooh, snowberries. More snowberries. Uh, okay, yeah, so this here is actually the way in. Yeah, looks like a nice little place he's got here. Vampires, huh? Could be tough. This could be challenging. I don't know if I have anything that's going to help me against vampires. Uh, I don't even know what it would be, what, what potion I would take. Resistance to blood sucking? I, I don't know. Uh, this certainly isn't very welcoming here. Let's go in, man. Let's see how big this place is. See how much of a job this is going to be to take care of this guy. Okay, let's get our little crouch on. Let's take a look at the map. Okay, here we are. We need to get over here. Who knows how much work there is to be done between this location and this location. Who knows? Let's move about. There is a trap there. Do not step on that trap, Lydia. Lydia, Lydia, do not step on that trap. Lydia. Yes, my thing? Go over there. Okay, got it. Nice. Now, let's see, is there another? Go over there. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I just wanted to make sure she was going to step on that thing. What is, is this? Oh! Uh, is someone there? Oh crap, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Vampires, I don't know, are they are they immune or to fire? Do they hate fire? Um, are they weak to fire? Let's get my fire ready. I got my fire ready. I wonder how vampires feel about, um... Werewolves. Hmm? I think being a werewolf would be a good thing to do. I really haven't made very much use of my werewolf abil ability. Uh, so in order to do that, I would need to go here. Uh, magic. Beast form. Favorite it. Beast form. Choose it. So now when I press my Z button, I'll turn into a beast. Which means I have no use for magic. All right, Lydia, you, guys, you ready for this, Lydia? I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but I'm going to give it a shot. Oh. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, man. I will say this, though. There are those pots there that I could shoot with a bow. Probably take out some of these guys. Oh, I'm on. Here I go. Here I go. Here we go. Stand up, dude. Gosh, take your time. Take your time. Gee whiz. Take your time, dude. 
Take your toll, take your time. Boy, they sure are hurting me a lot, and I don't feel like I'm hurting them all that much. Oh, she's gonna enjoy killing me. Lydia, you need to watch out or I'm gonna... Oh, gosh. Okay, one down, but I think Lydia was the one who really did the, the work there. Okay, so here's another vampire over here. Hey, quit hitting my friend. Oh man, I am angry. I am angry. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I don't know what just happened there. Uh, so, okay. Feed, there we go. Heart consumed werewolf perk progress increased. Bloodlust extended. There we go, we're gonna feed, man. Why can't I feed on this one? I'm still hungry. Why can't I feed on that one? What the hell, man? Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I can only feed every so often? This is all very new to me. I, I don't really have a lot of experience being a, a uh, werewolf. So uh, why can't I feed on these other guys? That's what I want to know. What was so special about this one? Uh, so something about my perks being increased here. Um, do I have any perks that I could spend? Mm, no? Okay. I, all right. I don't know what level I am as a werewolf. I see level 20 up here. Is that my werewolf level? Level, And then this bar needs to go all the way up to get to the next level so then I could do some stuff here? And if that's so, why 20? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, but I'm uh, disappointed. I killed three people. How come I only get to feed on one of them? What the hell? What's up with feeding as a werewolf? I can't loot anything as a werewolf, which, you know, could be considered good or bad. Oh, oh, oh! Hardware. Oh gosh, I don't have a whole lot of health here. Maybe I should do something about that. Oh crap! I can't take health as a vamp- or a, I keep saying vampire. Uh, I can't take health as a werewolf, can I? I don't think I can. What do I do? Um, new perks become available after feeding on enough corpses. Each new perk requires a few more feedings. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I'm finding myself in a tricky situation here because I don't have a lot of health, and I don't know how to get health. Um, so I guess I have to let Lydia do the fighting. Um, I don't have any... Ooh, I, I have a shout. I think I just scared Lydia. Look at that. Oh, look, she's actually hiding because I shouted. She just happened to be running around the corner when I shouted. Sorry, Lydia. Man, I need to feed on corpses, man. How the heck am I supposed to heal myself if I can't feed, feed on a corpse? Okay, come on, Lydia. It's okay. I'm so Here, Lydia, I'm sorry. Lydia. Hey, Lydia, come on, talk to me. I'm really sorry. I, di I didn't know it was you coming around the corner there. Uh, I wonder if I could even scare a, a, a gargoyle. Okay. Oh, I think I scared Lydia, too. He's running away. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Well, that almost felt like cheating. Man, I can't feed on this either. What the hell? Oh, I've, I've, oh, okay, I'm back. And suddenly I'm... Nah, I'm not carrying too much, right? Surely I'm not. Nah, I'm not. I am carrying more stuff than I thought I was carrying, but... Okay, so... Search the gargoyle. Get a flawless garnet and a moonstone ore. That's pretty cool. Take everything. That's pretty cool. Uh, that little shout thing that I did there, that's the key to being a vamp... <sighs> Werewolf. I'm sorry, I keep getting this... Mixed up. I get my classic movie monsters mixed up all the time. So, um, these people up here that I killed, I mean, surely I could go back and loot them, right? Search this guy. Or gal. Garnet gold. Armor. Vampire dust. You, amethysts. Circlet, arrow, potion, armor, dust, and then this one that I fed on, I can still loot it. 
Okay, that's... That's okay. That's okay. Secret is... To shout. Scare them so they run away and then just hit them in the back as they run away from you. It seems kind of like a cheap attack, but uh, it's very effective. So this this gargoyle actually did come to life, whereas this one hasn't yet. I wouldn't be surprised if it did eventually. The door over here. This door is barred from the other side. Classic adventure game trope there. I keep our eyes open for traps on the ground. We know that they're they exist. We saw one in here. That doesn't necessarily mean there's more, but it's good to be aware. What's going on in here? Look at this place. What's our map look like right now? Okay, we're in this big room here. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Why is this like all glowy looking? Like it's all lit up. Hmm. I don't know what's up with that. Got a nice table here. Dresser with a hat. Any potions? Potion of minor stamina. Bleeding crown. Uh, garlic, which I think is um, an ingredient. Potion of Plentiful Healing. We've got some Death Bell up here. End table with um, gold. More bone meal. Imp Stool. Uh, a Dance and Fire Volume 3. You know, of all the Dance and Fire books there are, and I think there's a f f quite a few of them, Volume 3 just happens to be one of them that I already have. But, oh, this one's only value, valued at three, so there's no sense in, in uh, taking that. Uh, we've got an an Antecedents of Dwemer Law, The Song of Pelinal, vol Volume 2. <sighs> Lydia, where, where the hell's Lydia? I need you to pick some books up for me, Lydia. What the... Lydia, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> come here. We heading out? <laughs> Follow me. As you will, my Thane. Come on. I will protect you with my life. <laughs> okay. Come on, Lydia. I mean, I don't think she was standing there because I told her to wait earlier. I mean, she moved after that. She came down and fought these guys after that. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I tell her to wait here, if if I tell her to wait here and then an enemy shows up, will, will she still go and fight those enemies anyway, even if it means losing or, or moving? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't have an answer for you. Uh, Lydia, come here. I want you to pick these books up for me so they don't get marked as red. Yes, my thing? In my uh, inventory. I want you to pick up... Well, that's weird. Well, you know, it is true that I have not read that book, but uh, I do have it already. So pick up The Song of Pelinol, Volume 2. Okay, got it. And also pick up Antecedents of Dwemer Law. Okay, got it. And while you're at it, why not pick up uh, The Bear of Markarth? Okay, got it. And uh, why not Ingol and the Sea Ghost, too? Okay, got it. What about The Spirit of Nern? Okay, got it. She's got it. Don't you worry. Okay, got it. Anything else? Thank you, Lydia. Very helpful. Very helpful indeed. Okay. Uh, let's move on, I guess. What is this? Looks like ice. Ice in here. Vampire likes it cold. Oh, bats. Oh, yeah. It's like a... I've never seen anything quite like that. Yeah, it's like a nature hike. What's going on here? She's never seen a an inclined plane before. Look at this place he's got going on. There's somebody over there.
Oh, hi, how's it going? Oh, no, don't do that to me. I don't like it. Um, well, let's uh, beast it up. What, I can't beast it up? Okay. Oh, you can only be a beast once a day or something like that, I think. So back to fire breath for me. He's doing a fine job here. Whoa. Blew up. What was that, Lydia? Something blew up. Oh, here they come. Oh, somebody shoot me with a bow. We need to go take care of that loser right now. You could play at that game. I'll kill you if I have to, she says. Well, I mean, isn't that what you're trying to do by shooting pointy sticks at me? Crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. 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 Better take some health. Better take it now. Uh, let's do plentiful healing. Health regenerates faster for 300 seconds, but it also damages my target. My my magicka. I am the target here. Gargoyle. Ah, damn it. I threw a curveball and I hit Lydia instead. Well, this sword is very effective against that gargoyle, I'll tell you that. Not so much against this thrall, though. There we go. There we go. You just gotta get a good hit in. Woohoo, vampires. What do you got? I'm sorry I hit you with fire, Lydia. She must be like, oh my god, how'd I get this job? Uh, the vampire's thrall. Let's get the uh, gold and arrows and arrows. Thank you for your contribution to the Mental Fox Adventuring Fund. Here is an arcane enchanter that uh, is an interesting location. It's kind of cool. Um, I don't remember whether I've picked anything up. Look at this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dwarven boots of muffling. We wearer is muffled and moves silently. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disenchant this. Now, I know Dwarven Boots are awesome, but I can't improve these at all uh, since they've already got an enchantment on them. So I'm going to go ahead and just learn the enchantment. And then these things too. This Vampire Armor of Minor Conjuration, that's new to me. So let's learn it. And then... Um, Vampire Armor of Minor Destruction. We'll also disenchant that. And uh, there we go. We've lightened our load a little bit. We've learned a few things. And uh, we've all grown a little bit. Got ourselves a, a gar gargoyle here. Oh, these gargoyles apparently are miners. They like to uh, mine stuff. Can I just reach in there and take the death bell there? What? No, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. There was an ash pile on this incline here. I'll take the gold. There's some gold sitting there at the bottom of that ash pile. Got some stuff just lying here. Lydia. Oh, the Bear of Markarth. I, I just picked that up. So I guess I don't need that again. Um, Uncommon Taste. We read that one before. I actually remember that. Let's search this satchel. Slaughterfish egg. Ooh, Wolf Queen Volume 4. We read the first three. Lydia. Yes, my thing? Pick that up, will ya? Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, pick that up. Nice. I'm excited. Anything else? Uh no, nothing right now. Uh potion draft. There's a skeleton over here we could search. Search the skeleton. Skeletons always have gold on them. It's hilarious. I don't know where they keep it. It's not like they have pockets. Um, let's see. Here's another body over here. Gold lockpick. Armor. Dust. Armor to armor and dust to dust. Did we kill anybody up here? Yes. Fam. Higher fledgling amethyst lockpick potion armor dust killing vampires is a uh, good business 
Doing some arrows here. Orcish ones at that. Those are good arrows, man. You want those. You see an Orcish arrow line on the ground. You pick it up. What's in the, what's in the box? Okay. Alright, let's... Uh, Move forward here. Did I search this guy already? No. Gold. Armor. Dust. This is awesome. Alright, Lydia, let's go. Let's go. What does our map look like? Our map looks like this. So I guess this bright color means that um, it's um, a, an icy area. I find that an odd thing to have show up on a map, but... That's all right. Information is always good. Get back to Crouchy Crouch. Why not improve our sneak? Goat hide. Hmm, okay. Maybe that'll help keep us warm in case we get real cold, Lydia. I mean, pick that up, man. Pick up your mess. What the hell, dude? Well, this uh, looks kind of almost like a living quarters. Here is an alchemy lab here. Interesting. Ooh, yeah. P -p Potion of plentiful healing. We got more books in here. Yes, my thing. Pick those up, will you? Ancestors in the Dunmer. Okay, so this guy's quite the the reader. Okay, got it. Thank you. Here, get these two while you're at it. Okay, got it. Let's get out of her way so she can get over there. There we go. Okay, got it. Those, there okay, may have been some it. duplicates there, but that's okay. Anything else? Uh, not right now. Well, I'll let you know, but thank you so very much. You're very helpful. I'm glad you're here with me. Oh, there's another book there. Yes, my thing? Pick it up. Anything thank you. else? No, that's good for right now. Thank you. She's fantastic. Gold. People just, I guess, empty just, just empty their pockets. They just come home and they just throw their gold in a drawer. Oh gosh, look at this place. What the heck is going on in here? I need to get in here. There's no two ways about it. Oh. Say it ain't so. Yeah. We have more than 99 lockpicks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, there's somebody laying down over there. Oh, 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 oh. We may feed again today. We may feed again today. She didn't like that very much. <laughs> I'm on your side. <laughs> Oh, there's a wolf in here. Hi. Hi, wolf. I'm sorry I'm not going to let you out, because I'll just kill you if I do, because you'll try to kill me. Right? He's cute. Yes, you're a cute little wolfy wolf. Yes, you are. But you're going to stay in there. It's better for both of us if you stay in there. Ooh, chests. I like to search chests. Dwarven arrows, gold. Iron Helmet of Alteration, and a Lesser Soul Gem. That's empty, but oh well. You can see my uh, encumbrance is getting up there. Lydia, I've got some work for you to do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did she get at her weapon? Crap, it's probably because of that wolf. That's probably, yeah. <laughs> She's like, we can't let this wolf live. Lydia, stand down. Stand down, Lydia. What the? What, what, are you, what are you doing? No, Lydia. Look, Lydia. Yes, my get over here. What are you doing? <laughs> that was funny. Anything else? Uh, let's see here. What is this? Blooded vampire? Blooded vampire. Okay. Yeah, we got an ash pile here. Nothing in that I want. Oh, we've got ourselves a petty soul gem. Oh man, draft of health, poison, poison, scroll, scroll, coin purse, 
Steel Dagger of Souls. A book. Incident at Necrom. Lydia, come here. I want you to pick this book up. Yes, my thing? Here, pick that up, will you? I can't touch it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Come here. Pick this up, too. Okay, got it. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Come on. Take your time. Come on, Lydia. We got stuff to do, man. Come on. People are watching. Let's go. Come on, Lydia. Oh, my gosh. She <laughs> She's sassing me. She's like... Oh, sure. Let me get right on that. I'll go pick up that book for you. It's so important. The Cake and the Diamond, we read that one before. Uh, Gods and Worship. Okay, got it. <laughs> she is in no hurry. <laughs> and the way she's looking at me, she's like, Yeah, I'll pick up your damn book. Okay, got it. Wolf Queen Volume 5. Okay, got it. Oh, this is all very exciting. Okay, got it. All right. Thank you so much, Lydia. Anything else? I know I give you a hard time, Lydia, but you're very important to me. Leather strips, a flute. Oh, man. I'm going to take that flute. Maybe give it to one of my kids. Maybe they could play the flute. I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly what you should do. Give your children musical instruments. Uh, no, seriously, though. You should, encourage, you should encourage that kind of thing in children. But just make sure that you have a very soundproofed home. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm, I'm joking around, of course. Uh, lavender, snowberries, troll scroll. <laughs> Lydia, it's okay. It's okay. He's behind bars. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, Lydia. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand what's going on. Um. Well, let's see if I can get her to move along with me here. What? Uh, let's see. We got some gold. Hide shield of resist fire. Well, I might learn something from that. You if I have to. <laughs> I'll kill you if I have to. I will, man. I'm not afraid. I'll do it. Come on, lids. I like colored lids. She likes that. Actually, she hates it. All right. Um, let's see. Now you'll pay. <laughs> uh, okay, this will take us out here. This will just take us in this way. So there's two different ways to go to the same place. Oh, this is this is actually the way I came because I remember that stuff on the ground. All right. Lydia, come on, let's go. It's so funny. <laughs> Fine. No! Now you'll pay. Oh, damn it. I didn't hit him. Can I not shoot through the... No, I can't, can I? Let's see if this works. There. Now... I feel bad about that. I do. It's a poor defenseless wolf. Uh, but I didn't... I didn't want to take the time to unlock the thing. And uh, I, need, I needed Lydia to focus. <laughs> she was a little distracted. I needed her focus. needed her to focus. Come on, Lydia. Let's go. Actually, Lydia, while I'm thinking about it, come here. Still here. Okay. I, I need to trade some things with you. I am at your command. Okay, good. Uh, so we are going to give her some heavy stuff. Actually, let's just give her some heavy stuff I'm not using because I'm almost over encumbered. We're going to give her... I mean, I need to use the Wabajack on one of these things. Just see what happens. This uh, Orcish bow. Uh, why am I not wearing the steel plate helmet? I thought I was wearing a steel plate helmet. Oh, I'm st I think I'm still wearing this circlet of minor archery from way a long time ago. I have to remedy that. Um, that frees me up pretty well. Lead on. So let me go into my own inventory here, and I need to switch back to the steel plate helmet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go, Lydia. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. 
Um, let's see here. We've got that over there. Got a waterfall here. Don't want to fall down there, I don't think. There's going to be more vampires I need to take on before we're done with this. We're getting closer. Okay, so we're up above where I was a moment ago. I've already been down there. So this is kind of neat. Iron mace. I don't need that. I don't think I do anyway. Well, there's a gate here. It's feeling like maybe this is going to be a little uh, bossy here, right? Hmm, there's some bodies in there. There he is. He sits up there. He sits upon his throne. Be the next act of the show. These are death hounds. Uh, come on, get your weapon out, dude. Man, I don't know what tell you to do. Lydia, how's it going over here? Come on, Lydia. Whoa, it blowed up. Oh, oh, you're gonna come down here now. Okay, almost dead. Let's take some health. I'm gonna take a uh, potion of, uh, Plentiful healing? I'll throw a minor healing on top of that just to top me off. Okay, she did. They don't like my flaming um, sword. They don't like it at all. Let's see. Let's search this bandit. He's got a garnet, some gold. Nothing else I want. And uh, let's search the vampire. Plenty of time to search. There's always time to search. And what do you got? A bandit here. We'll take your gold. Thank you. Uh, Death Hound. Take the collar. I don't think I... It sure is worth a lot. Or a miscellaneous thing. I, I think that's worth picking up. Ooh, an amethyst. Okay, who else? Oh, where'd, where'd Big Master Vampire go? Where'd he take off to? There's another chain there to pull. We'll pull that here in just a second. There you are. Here I am. Oh boy, here we go. Here, I, here we go. Here we go. Oh, neat. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Okay. Didn't really help him all that much, uh, considering um, she had no armor on at all. So, um... Oh, you bastard. Here. Here, let me help you out there, Lydia. Oh, screw you, Vigor. <laughs> you pushover. <laughs> what do you got? Seven gold? Really, dude? What have you been doing on this time as a vampire? Seven, how do you amassed this empire of vampires with seven gold? Sheesh. I tell you, man. I tell you. Uh, iron arrow. Don't know if I need to get in these cells or not. Oh, there's a body in there. So I would imagine that somewhere there's a chain you could pull that will open those. If I find that chain, I'll pull it and see if we can't get in there and loot that body. It's, might be worth it. I don't know. Here's another arrow. I love that I could pick arrows up off the ground. I love it. Okay. Can't walk up that. Empty wine bottle. Huh. 
So the little arena here for their entertainments. A little bench to sit on. Doesn't look very comfortable, but when the entertainment's that good, it doesn't matter. What do you got? Uh, gold. Nothing that great, really. I'm a little disappointed in you. I'm worried that these things are going to shoot back up, and then I'm going to get trapped in there. So, I don't really see anything else that I'm interested in. So that ought to do it. Well, this is all very exciting. That was, uh... That was awesome. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. I was really expecting a really challenging fight with that, uh... Vampire, but no, it wasn't challenging at all. You know what? I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. So it looks like uh, we just go this way to get out of here, and uh, then we'll be on our way. Ooh! It's time to do some mining, though. You know, priorities and all that. Nice. Get ourselves some silver. Making this an even more fruitful escapade. Ooh, we got a chest over here. Search it. Banded iron shield. It's not worth all that much. Dwarven bow of thunderbolts. Hmm. Elven bow of torpor. Gold Ring of Smithing. I thought it said Ring of Smiling. Scroll of Call to Arms. Woohoo! Neat. All right, Lydia. This is great. Now we just need to get down off this mountain. Cool. Vigar is no more. He is no more. That's not the way out. I need to go up these steps, don't I? It's awful drafty in here. Don't step on that. Well, you can step on it now, Lydia. It's okay. It's fine. Back out to Skyrim. So, now... We're up on top of this mountain. And uh, we need to get down. We need to get back to... Falkrith. And I believe this is the last thing that we needed to do to help out the people of um, Falkrith. I'm hoping that once we get back there and we let Dengir know that Vigor is dead, this will churn... This will complete. And then we could go back and speak with uh, Sidgir and uh, become a... Thing of Falkrith. Okay, so we are going to take the same trail down that we took up, I think. Oh, but first, Quicksilver. Hmm. I wonder what I use that for. Nice. Okay, we got some Quicksilver Ore. That's cool, man. Nothing like mining for ore after a tough day f fighting vampires, huh? Yeah. Work off some of that, that stress of being around vampires. Speaking of which, did I get vampired? I did not. Cool. I still have this blessing of RK from a long time ago, man. Seems like it was a long time ago that I got that blessing. It's quite a blessing. Okay, let's see here. Um. Um. What was the path that I took? 
to get here. I don't recall. This way. This looks kind of like a path here, too. But this is the way I went before. It's weird. Uh, I know that's a tree right there, but from here it looks like a cell tower. <laughs> okay, so we want to go... This way? Yeah, go out here and then turn right. Okay. These rocks were probably my hint that this is the path. There I go. See you later. Lydia keeping up with us there. She's so loyal. What am I going to do once I become Thane of Falkreath and I get a, get another house, Carl? <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> am I going to keep Lydia? Uh, apparently you can uh, romance Lydia. That's my understanding anyway. I'm right behind you. Um, I mean, I know I already asked her these things before. The Jarl has recognized you as a person of great importance in the Hold. A hero. The title of Thane is an honor. A gift for your service. Guards will know to look the other way if you tell them who you are. Hmm. And, uh, what do you do, again? Remind me. As my Thane, I'm sworn to your service. I'll guard you and all you own with my life. Damn, wouldn't you rather be a Thane? So, you know, if there's an option to romance her, I don't know how follow. to get to it. I'm not saying I even want to. Uh, but I had the thought... What if I romanced her and she became my wife, and then I could have somebody else as my house Carl? Mm -hmm. Just thinking out loud here. There's these bear traps that I uh, activated a while back. Speaking of bears, you'd think you'd see more bears up here, right? in these mountains, and I still need to get, I believe, two more bear pelts for uh, Temba. Oh, oh, oh. Hold the phone. Ooh, moon, Moonstone. Now that, that's pretty rare, I believe. I think you use Moonstone in, like, elven items. So, we're gonna stop and mine this Moonstone here. Nice. Okay. Cool. Hello, bunny rabbit. Looks like there's another path there. Okay, that, that path there will take us to um, Ancestor Glade, whatever that is. But I don't want to go there. I want to go down the mountain. Pretty steep here. Lydia's trucking right along, though. She's a trooper. I keep an eye out for more stuff to mine, man. There's more moonstone, moonstone up here. Well, we could store that stuff away for the day that we start crafting elven items, I think. So we get out of the, the snowy part of the mountain, and the sound effects change, the music stops playing. It's pretty cool. Really, uh... Has a different feel. There's that body we saw in the last episode, Dark Elf. And then here are these, uh, Bandit thugs. 
that we fought in the last episode. Did I loot all of them? Did I loot him too? Yeah. Gotta get my flowers, man. Oh yeah. Hmm. It's nest. Thought I'd already looted that before, but maybe that was a different one. The one I saw before had like a dead fox or something lying in front of it, if I remember correctly. I don't want to go up, I want to go down. Or... Maybe I do want to go up. Well, no, that'll take me home, won't it? Country roads? Uh, okay, we're going to Falkreath. Cool, man. Alright, well that wasn't bad. Getting down that mountain, not too bad. Wish I could clean, the, clean this place up. Get out of the way. <laughs> I actually hurt myself trying to move a boulder. By the way, man, clean this place up a little bit. This is just, I mean, this is this is the path to my home, and it just looks real shoddy with all these rocks in the way. So I'm gonna kind of push these over to the side a little bit. <laughs> I mean, come on, get out of the road, man. It looks, it looks terrible. This junk sitting on the side of the road, or sitting in the middle of the road. If it's on the side of the road. It's okay. Look at me go. <laughs> how strong I am. There, doesn't that look better? It just looks better already. Let's clear this place up a little bit. Come on, show a little pride in your surroundings. So back towards Falkreath we walk. But uh, we will actually uh, make it to Falkreath in the next episode because uh, it's time time to read a book, and we have quite a few books to read. Lydia, I'm right behind you. Uh, I want the um, I am the Wolf Queen, Volume Four, from her. We read the first three volumes a couple episodes ago, so um, let's. Uh, she's got Volume Four and Volume Five. This is all very exciting. So let us read on end this episode with the reading of The Wolf Queen Volume 4 by Wogan Yarth From the pen of the first century third era sage Montakai third era 109 ten years after being crowned emperor of Tamriel Antiochus Septim had impressed his subjects with little but the enormity of his lust for carnal pleasures by his second wife, Jacilla, he had a daughter in the year 104, who he named Kintyra, after his great-great-great-grand-aunt, the Empress. Enormously fat and marked by every venereal disease known to the healers, Antiochus spent little time on politics. His siblings, by marked contrast, excelled in this field. Magnus had married Helena, the Cyrodiil queen of Lilmoth, the Argonian priest king having been executed and was representing the imperial interests in Black Marsh admirably. Sepphoris and his wife Bianchi were ruling the Hammerfell kingdom of Ghislaine with a healthy brood of children. But no one was more politically active than Potema, the wolf queen of the Skyrim kingdom of solitude. Nine years after the death of her husband, King Mentiarco, Potema still ruled as regent for her young son, Uriel. Their court had become very fashionable, particularly for rulers who had a grudge to bear against the Emperor. All the kings of Skyrim visited Castle Solitude regularly, and over the years emissaries from the lands of Morrowind and High Rock did as well. Some guests came from even farther away. Third Era 110 Potema stood at the harbor and watched the boat from Pyandonia arrive. Against the gray, breaking waves where she had seen so many vessels of Tamrielic manufacture, it looked less than exotic. Insectoid, certainly, with its membranous sails and rugged chitin hull, but she had seen similar, if not identical, sea craft in Morrowind. No, if not for the flag which, would, which was markedly alien, she would not have picked out the ship from others in the harbor. As the salty mist ballooned around her, she held out her hand in welcome to the visitors from another island empire. 
The men aboard were not merely pale, they were entirely colorless, as if their flesh were made of some white, limpid jelly, but she had been forewarned. At the arrival of the king and his translator, she looked directly into their blank eyes and offered her hand. The king made noises. His great majesty, King Orgnum, said the translator haltingly, expresses his delight at your beauty. He thanks you for giving him refuge from these dangerous seas. You speak Cyr Cyrodiilic very well, said Potema. I am fluent in the languages of four continents, said the translator. I can speak to the denizens of my own country, Pia Piandonia, as well as those of Atmora, Akavir, and here in Tamriel. Yours is the easiest, actually. I was looking forward to this voyage. Please tell His Highness that he is welcome here, and that I am entirely at his disposal, said Potema, smiling. Then she added, You understand the context, that I am just being polite? Of course, said the translator, and then made several noises at the king, which the king reacted to with a smile. While they conversed, Potema looked up the dock and saw the now familiar gray cloaks watching her while they spoke with Levlet, Antiochus's man. The Sygic order from the Somerset Isle, very bothersome. My diplomatic, <laughs> my diplomatic emissary, Lord Vaken, will show you to your rooms, said Potema. Unfortunately, I have some other guests as well who require my attention. I hope your great majesty understands. His great majesty, King Orgnum, did understand, and Potema made arrangements to dine with the Pyandonians that evening. Meeting with the Sygic Order required all of her concentration. She dressed in her simplest black and gold robe and went to her stateroom to prepare. Her son Uriel was on the throne, playing with his pet yogurt. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, darling, said Potema, lifting her son into the air with a faint strain. Talos, but you are heavy. I don't think I've ever carried such a heavy ten-year-old. That's probably because I'm eleven, said Uriel, perfectly aware of his mother's tricks. And you're going to say that as an eleven-year-old, I should probably be with my tutor. I was fanatical about studying at your age, said Potema. I am king, said Uriel, petulantly. But don't be satisfied with that, said Potema. By all rights, you should be emperor already. You understand that, don't you? Uriel nodded his head. Potema took a moment to marvel at his likeness to the portraits of Tiber Septim. The same ruthless brow and powerful chin. Chin? <laughs> chin. When he was older and lost his baby fat, he'd be a spitting image of his great-great-great-great-great-granduncle. Behind her, she heard the door opening and an usher bringing in several gray cloaks. She stiffened slightly and Uriel on cue jumped down from the throne and left the stateroom, pausing to greet the most important of the Sygics. Good morning, Master Solaris, he said, enunciating each syllable with a regal accent that made Potema's heart soar. I hope your accommodations at Castle Solitude meet with your approval. They do, King Uriel, thank you, said Solaris, delighted and charmed. Solaris and his Sygics entered the chamber, and the door was shut behind them. Potema sat only for a moment on the throne before stepping off the dais and greeting her guests. I am so sorry to have kept you waiting, said Potema. I think that you sailed all the way from the Somerset Isles, and I should keep you waiting any longer. Oh, I said that wrong. To think that you sailed all the way from the Somerset Isles, and I should keep you waiting any longer. You must forgive me. It's not all that long a voyage, said one of the Grey Cloaks angrily. It isn't as if we sailed all the way from Pyandonia. Ah, you've seen my most recent guests, King Orgnum and his retinue, said Potema breezily. I suppose you think it unusual me entertaining them, as we all know the Pyandonians mean to invade Tamriel. You are, I take it, as neutral in this as you are in all political matters? Of course, said Solaris proudly. We have nothing to gain or lose by the invasion. The Sygic Order preceded the organization of Tamriel under the Septim Dynasty, and we shall survive under any political regime. Rather like a flea on whatever mongrel happens along, are you? said Potema, narrowing her eyes. Don't overestimate your importance, Solaris. Your order's child, the Mage's Guild, has twice the power you have, and they are entirely on my side. We are in the process of making an agreement with King Orgnum. When the Pyandonians take over, and I am in my proper place as Empress of this continent, then you shall know your proper place in the order of things. With a majestic stride, Potema left the stateroom, leaving the Grey Cloaks to look from one to the other. 
We must speak to Lord Levlet, said one of the Grey Cloaks. Yes, said Solaris, perhaps we should. Levlet was quickly found at his usual place at the Moon and Nausea Tavern. As the three Grey Cloaks entered, led by Solaris, the smoke and the noise seemed to die in their path. Even the smell of tobacco in Flynn dissipated in their wake. He rose and then escorted them to a small room upstairs. You've reconsidered, said Levlet, with a broad smile. Your emperor, said Solaris, and then corrected himself. Our emperor originally asked for our support in defending the west coast of Tamriel from the Pyandonian fleet and returned for 12 million gold pieces. We offered our services at 50. Upon reflection on the dangers that a Pyandonian invasion would have, we accept his earlier offer. The Mage's Guild has generously, per perhaps for as low as 10 million gold pieces, said Solaris quickly. Over the course of dinner, Potema promised King Orgnum, through the interpreter, to lead an insurrection against her brother. She was delighted to discover that her capacity for lying worked in many different cultures. Potema shared her bed that night with King Orgnum, as it seemed the polite and diplomatic thing to do. As it turned out, he was one of the better lovers she had ever had. He gave her some herbs before beginning that made her feel as if she was floating on the surface of time, conscious only of the gestures of love after she had found herself making them. She felt herself like the cooling mist, quenching the fire of his lust over and over and over again. In the morning when he kissed her on the cheek and said with his bald white eyes that he was leaving her, she felt a stab of regret. The ship left harbor that morning en route to the Somerset Isles and the imminent invasions. She waved them off to sea as she, as she, as she footsteps behind her. Maybe that's supposed to say as she heard footsteps behind her. It was Levlet. They will do it for eight million, your highness, she said. Thank Mara, said Potema. I need more time for an insurrection. Pay them from my treasury and then go to the imperial city and get the twelve million from Antiochus. We should make a good profit from this game and you, of course, will have your share. Three months later, Potema heard that the fleet of Pyandonians had been utterly destroyed by a storm that had appeared suddenly off the Isle of Arteum, the home port of the Sijic Order. King Orgnum and all of his ships had been utterly annihilated. Sometimes making people hate you, she said, holding her son Uriel close, is how you make a profit. And there you have it, The Wolf Queen, Volume 4. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, won't you let me know? Maybe leave me a like or a comment. Thank you so much for watching. I sure hope you join me again in the next episode.